very <clears throat> delicate moment to offer your prayers to get help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is one very <clears throat> important ayat mubarka you should uh, recite it that is Rabba Naqshif Annal Azaba Inna Mu'minun Rabba Naqshif Annal Azaba Inna Mu'minun We are Muslims O oh Allah lift this Azab So oh, I hope all of you will recite it It is in the Holy Quran Well after that we come to our pharmacology Number of basic lectures they are being delivered by very expert teachers and I go through all the lectures in my office and see what's uh, further required or what is extra and hope all of my students they attend these lectures and they are quite fresh at the time of the, our lecture delivery. So, whenever a lecture is there, all of the students must be fresh, they must be out of their beds and properly dressed. So, how to come over this pharmacology to give best results, you have already been told previously at the introductory lecture. So, after the morning prayer, while reciting few pages of the Holy Quran and then you have to go through this pharmacology because all these drugs are new for you and all the other things related to it are new and you have to come up so it's the best time is to go through it inshallah you will give good result and we will have nice time with you by the grace of Allah so here about one important part of uh, pharmacology, it is about the drugs metabolized. The drug metabolism and biotransformation. So, you see, all the humans, they are exposed to the compounds present in the environment are taken as food are taken as drugs and they are taken from outside and these outside compounds and we are exposed to uh, certain substances in the air like in in the air which we inhale in the water what we drink in the food we consume and like that now, the drugs we take for certain purposes so all these substances which are taken from outside they are known as xenobiotics xeno xenobiotics so they are metabolized most of the substances which are from outside they are harmless but at the same time certain other substances which may produce uh, toxic effects or which are hazardous so all these drugs in the body 
they are metabolized and there are reaction chemical reaction physiological reactions so which make these drugs uh, harmless they are made water soluble they are made polar uh, to be <coughs> get rid of it mainly from the from the uh, from the kidneys while the other drugs other substances which are metabol which are um, metabolized even are biotransformed at other places and the mere organ to metabolize the drug you all know it is the liver other sites of <clears throat> this uh, metabolism are there like in the lungs maybe metabolize in the gut in the lumen in the wall of the gut uh, so further they may be they by transform they are metabolized and through you know and they go via the portal system to the liver which is the main organ the drugs are also metabolized uh, even in skin even in kidneys and brain and like other sites where these are <clears throat> being transformed to polar sites or to make them mostly the drugs they are made harmless inactivated but in certain cases the drugs they are they are pro drugs you know don this pro drug pro drugs what is pro drug they are rather activated in the body and they show their effect so how the these chemical processes occur in the body so they are i mean divided into two main types phase 1 and phase 2 so we will go through different slide we will discuss it to have a further to elaborate this topic which is very very important because you should know about the pharmacokinetic of a drug uh, what you prescribes as a general principle in spite of knowing so many uh, <clears throat> drugs you should know a few the prototype drugs and concentrate on concentrate upon them then we come to the uh next uh, next slide about the, it is about the learning objectives what at the end of the lecture and after this uh, topic you, you should know what is metabolism and what is bio transformation and what is the difference between metabolism bio transformation elimination and excretion there will be two lectures on it and uh, at the end of the those lectures you should be able to so what are the phases of bio transformation what, what reactions occur in the first phase what reaction occur in the second phase then after the learning objectives about the common drugs you should know so their kinetic how they are being metabolized and at what place you have been told different sites where the d drugs are metabolized next you see the elimination elimination these are the various definitions you are asked about it elimination it is a chemical change in the drug molecule to make it pharmacologically inactive you have heard of it or we told the drugs are made inactive they are made water soluble they are made polar so far easy uh, term from to easy excretion from the body so inactive for the body which is done either by metabolism as in the majority of cases are through excretion from the body 
So you have been told that mostly those jars which are polar, uh, which are ionized, so they are excreted. So it's the elimination of a drug. Main uh, site is the kidney. Metabolism. What is metabolism? Is are the, these are the chemical and enzymatic reactions. Chemical reactions and enzymatic reactions in the drug molecules to break down them into their metabolites. The drugs are broken down into their metabolites. These metabolites may be inactive, they may be active, they may be toxic onward. So metabolism is the chemical enzymatic reaction. These definitions are asked in examination sometimes. It's a difference between metabolism and biotransformation. So these are the chemical enzymatic reactions. Even in that biotransformation, you will see these different chemical reactions like oxidation, reduction, hydroxylation, like that. You will go through that later on. These are chemical enzymatic reactions in the drug molecules to break down them into their metabolism. Drug metabolism is directly proportional to the active quantity of enzyme present. So how much enzyme is actively present, so there is direct relation, directly proportional to the active quantity of the enzyme present. Sites, you have been, I mean, previously told, I mean, different sites, when you give a drug that may be <coughs> metabolized right in the gut, or that may be metabolized in the gut wall, then in the blood or in, in the, then in the liver. So these are the various sites in the lungs, uh, in the skin, here you see gut, then blood, then skin, uh, in the kidney, then the lungs, adrenal gland has some ability to metabolize, uh, but mostly it occurs in the liver. You are, you know, the main organ to metabolize the drug is the liver. Then to the next one, metabolism is at excretory sites, if metabolites become lipid soluble, they will be well. You know the lipid soluble, they easily pass through in the membranes and at, at the same hour, so they are bound to the plasma protein. And at the glomerular level, they are not, uh, I mean, filtered, so remain in the blood. So their level remains for a longer time, for a longer period. So their effect will be longer. So half-life is in case. At excretory side, if metabolites become lipid soluble, they will be reabsorbed. Just note down, please. If they are lipid soluble, they will be reabsorbed. And if they are active too, then they will be available again for pharmacological. So their pharmacological effect will remain longer. Lipids are well-known examples. Is just not note down, say, of thiopentone sodium, and the American name is pentothal. Similarly, another drug, cicobarbitone. These drugs are rapid to act, but because of their high lipid solubility, you must have studied these drugs in the redistribution, note down, redistribution. You should have a copy and a pencil uh, with you to note know, know those words which are not being taught over here. So lipid soluble, they are reabsorbed. And if they are active too, then they will be available again for pharmacological effects. Next, we come to the other slide. Here you see a beautiful picture. I mean, these are presented by your one, one very expert is my assistant professor. So 
here you see on your left side if some metabolites are still unionized unionized these lipophilic they are unionized they get reabsorbed here you see in this uh, diagram so the from the kidney they escape they in spite of going into the glomerular filtrate they again go back into the uh, general circulation and on right side if a drug is ionized or it, is, it becomes polar or hydrophilic these are uh, similar names uh, synonyms you can say ionized hydrophilic polar note on please then the drug is excreted next week excretion it is the pharmacokinetic process in which the drug or its metabolites present systemically are removed from the body excretion is total removal from the body through excretory organ either in active or inactive form excretion may be of the active form of the drug or it may be of the inactive form of it. you you have been told that drugs are activated and inactivated generally uh, they may be activated or uh, they may be uh, they are converted to toxic metabolites biotransformation here you see the drug molecules are transferred from lipid soluble unionized form to water soluble it is also earlier discussed which are excretable so the lipid soluble they are converted to water soluble the lipid soluble they are unionized non polar they are converted to ionized form the polar form so they become excretable either through metabolic phase 1 or conjugation phase 2 mostly uh, the drugs go first into the phase 1 and but in certain cases the phase 2 that comes first like in note down in case of isoniazid isoniazid note down isoniazid is one uh, anti tuberculosis drug Note down, please. Isoniazid, I N H, is the abbreviation. However, after phase one reaction, the drug metabolites may be changed into inactive form, may be changed into active or more toxic. This is already discussed. The characteristics which were essential for absorption. is the lipid solubility are changed they are made water soluble through biotransfer which were essential for absorption lipid soluble are changed they are made water soluble so <coughs> for the through biotransformation this biotransformation process it converts the lipid soluble substance to the water soluble substances or excretion here you see this one this picture on left side is the absorption in phase 1 there is metabolism and in phase 2 it will be conjugation certain substances present in the body so the drugs are conjugated well known reaction uh, substance which conjugate with the drug so then they are eliminated like glucuronic acid glucuronic acid conjugation glycine conjugation glutathione conjugation like this we will i show you the exam may the exams may be in the later slides conjugation and on left side you see drug drug metabolites with modified activity in phase 1 their activity is modified and then again in phase 2 conjugation is there and then eliminated and below 
in the second drug example they are made inactive drug metabolized they are also conjugated and then they are metabolized. certain drugs are absorbed and eliminated you have been told that polar substances so then lipophilic substances they are converted to hydrophilic substances so they are eliminated outcome of metabolism what will happen next here you were <coughs> told you earlier protrus protrus they are inactive and in the body they are activated you should know a few examples of protrus like omeprazole not on omeprazole omeprazole it is proton pump inhibitor used for this acid peptic disease so protrus they are made active and then few drugs are not metabolized so are excreted as such then after the once the pro drug is converted to active form then phase 1 reaction starts metabolism so that what will happen two types of changes will occur in that activity excretability two types of changes in activity and excretability activity what will happen majority drugs are inactive elimination activity is affected they are inactivated few drugs are still active and there is no elimination as written over here then excretability excretability excretion whether inactive or active on left side if i also because it also becomes ionized and so they are made water soluble again and again we are repeating it ionized or water soluble so biotransformation will be there and then excreted both inactive and active form on right side if a drug is unionized lipid soluble eh or written over no and no biotransformer still present in the body both inactive and or the active form phase 2 conjugation reactions will occur and then after the phase you, you have been told by certain substances which are used in this conjugation so they conjugate with the drug so then they are excreted they are made water soluble excreted phases of bio transformation first again the state is the same the drug may directly go to phase 2 you have been given example of isoniazid and in general there is they go into phase 1 reaction they are, they are subject to phase 1 reaction you might have studied the, this metabolism right there in your biochemistry in phase 1 the these are the three main reactions either there is <coughs> oxidation of the substance of the substance other drug there may be reduction and hydrolysis oxidation reduction or these you must remember these three phase one reaction metabolites may be inactive or active or toxic on phase two conjugation metabolites again may be active or inactive but excretable phase 1 reactions you need to convert the parent drug to a molar po, more polar drug is made polar or water soluble it these things are coming again and again 
water soluble metabolites by unmasking or inserting a group. So these groups are added, like the hydroxyl group is added in the phase one reaction. Sulfhydryl group is, or this NH2 is added. So the modification of the drug molecule via oxidation, reduction, or hydrolysis. I mean, these are the three main reactions uh, that will occur <coughs> with the drug in this process. Well, on those reactions of the oxidation, reduction, hydrolysis, here is the oxidation. As written over, it is the most important reaction. Ah, you know what is oxidation? Addition of oxygen or removal of oxygen. Or the addition of negatively charged mighty or the removal of the positively charged mighty, removal of hydrogen. You are all familiar th with this process. Oxidation uh, and means addition of oxygen or a negatively charged mighty. A removal of hydrogen is also oxidation or a positively charged mighty removal. Then next one. Oxidation, you'll study this in detail, microsomal metabolism, microsomal metabolism. And the main enzyme series of enzymes are there, cytochrome P450 or just P450 isozymes. They are involved in this microsomal. You know there are microsome, lysosome, mitochondria, uh, and drug they are metabolized, certain drugs in at their so lysosomes. So these are different sides, even in the nucleus or around the nucleus in the membranes. So cytochrome P450 isozymes, they are involved in phase one reaction, microsomal oxidation processes, microsomal oxidation. And this, these enzymes, where they are localized, here you see localized in the smooth muscles endoplasmic reticulum. Mind it, this question, it comes somewhere in your MCQ, whether it is smooth muscle or rough muscles. Smooth muscles endoplasmic reticulum. Remember this smooth muscle. This smooth muscle endoplasmic, it contains this cytochrome P450, which is something very important in inducers of cytochrome P450 and the inhibitors of cytochrome. They are very important due to the various drug interactions. So these smooth muscles, endoplasmic reticulum, it produces these uh, oxidation enzymes and this present in the liver at subcellular level, or the, in the liver, other tissues, kidney, lungs, GIT epithelium, in the plasma, in the skin. These are the various sites where this smooth and muscle endoplasmic reticulum is present in the subcellular level. And these are the few well-known examples given over here. Further division of the hydroxy, uh, this oxidation, which is P450 oxidation of a drug, which is P450 dependent on leg side. Examples that are given over here are the hydroxylation, N dealkylation, O dealkylation, N oxidation, S oxidation, D amination, S oxidation, it is the sulfur being as N oxidation, O dealkylation. In this hydroxylation, the examples given over here are the which are the which are drugs are being hydroxylated by this oxidation system. So these are the amphetamines, 
he was studied later on amphetamines among the these uh, autonomic drugs then barbiturates you will study the note down these are sedatives phenytoin note down is anticonvulsant and warfarin it is anticoagulant you should have some basic knowledge about these common drugs then the examples of nd alkylation here you see alkylation codeine it is one alkyl at the end if it is ine it is alkyl usually so this caffeine is all of you take with in your tea caffeine it is dialkylated and this is oxidation process morphine you also know it is alkyl not down and it is dial then theophylline is another example then o dialkylation al dialkylation at total level so codeine it is hypnotic no tone hypnotic codeine obtained from morphine morphine you are all familiar it is dialkylate at the end it is ine so it is al alkyl what is alkyl and what is uh, this glycoside you should have some knowledge about it then n oxidation acetaminophen is a common drug which is oxidized by e450 system and acetamino panadol or paraminophen then nicotine is a common alkyl nicotine present in tobacco so it is oxidized by this oxidation system then s oxidation oxidation at the sulfur level these substances they contain this sulfur in their structure note down chlorpromazine chlor chlorpromazine antipsychotic drug then cimetidine also contains sulfur and uh, this is you know h2 receptor histamine 2 receptor block just note down please and then thioridazine and another example is of deamination amine mighty is removed and example is in amphetamine diazepam diazepam is among the sedative hypnotics again please here is one examples of a uh, few examples of hydroxylation are there oh group that is added so pentobarbitone and the other one pentobarbitone it is sedative hypnotic then on right side propranolol propranolol it is beta block note down please note down it is being hydroxylated so pentobarbitone it is also other examples propranolol barbiturates is a group barbiturates sedative not a phenytoin you have been told it is anticonvulsant warfarin it is hydroxylated it is anticoagulant amphetamine is a one adrenergic drug note down please amphetamine adrenergic drug then ibuprofen well known drug ibuprofen you might have heard about ibuprofen it is also hydroxylated digitoxin it is cardiotonic drug mepropamate come it comes among the sedative hypnotics mepropamate bamate well after the examples of dialkylation you have us ready gone through it common examples which are drugs are dialkylated for the examples of the n dialkylation o dialkylation lidocaine Dif other names for lidocaine note down please lignocaine xylocaine so these are the other names for lidocaine you know lignocaine you know given as local anesthetic Lidocaine. You will study it. You will have a complete one lecture about lidocaine. It is dialkylated. Then finasteride. Finasteride in body it converts to paracetamol. Finasteride. 
paracetamol. So it is the dealkylation at O level, oxygen. Here you see C2H5 is added to it. In lidocaine case, you see N dealkylation. At nitrogen level, C2H5, they are removed. Another example given over dealkylation is S dealkylation at the level of sulfur. So, alkyl <coughs> mighty that is removed at the level of sulfur. Then, uh, on right side, parathione, the organic poison. Parathione, malathione, no, don't please. Parathione, they contain sulfur and uh, at the level of sulfur, it is desulfuration. Sulfur is removed. Parathione, thiopentone, it is this one, as you know, general anesthetic given intravenous desulfuration at the level of sulfur. Uh, you, it is removed as oxidation that will occur, desulfuration, sulfur is removed. Then examples of oxidation, left side, benz, pyrin, it is being oxidized. And right side, chlorpromazine, well-known antipsychotic drug, major anti-tranquilizer, note on please, chlorpromazine. It is being oxide, oxidized at oxy, sulfur level, sulfoxidation. Again, air oxidation is also of again acetaminophen oxidation. Oxidation hydroxyl group is added over here to acetaminophen. Beautiful example. Go through it. After the oxidation, that was about the microsomal C cytochrome P450 dependent. Here is non microsomal oxidation. Non micro microsomal oxidation, and here is non micro. These non microsomal oxidation is at the level of mitochondria and cytosol. Mitochondria, mitochondria and cytosol. Well known examples of ethanol. Other name for ethanol, ethyl alcohol, please note it. Then epinephrine, adrenergic drug, your adrenaline, other name for epinephrine is adrenaline, then propyl thiouracil. Then other examples of this oxidation is, say, the alcohol dehydrogenase. Alcohol, these are the examples, these are the enzymes, alcohol dehydrogen. You know, uh, this, it will act on alcohol and that will be dehydrogenated. So, the alcohol that it, we converted to acetaldehyde, a toxic metabolite. Further, on the acetaldehyde, aldehyde dehydrogenase will uh, uh, act so further is take a water form like that. Another example of the enzyme with, over, given over of this oxidation system is xanthine oxidase. Xanthine oxidase. You might have gone through these examples in your bio. It converts hypoxanthine to xanthine and then xanthine is converted to uric acid. Example of this uh, uh, non microsomal in the oxidation is tyrosine hydroxylase. Tyrosine. Hope all of you are familiar with this. Tyrosine metabolism. It acts on the tyrosine and converts to dopa. Then you know dopa is converted to dopamine, like all further processes. Then monoamine oxidase, MAO, is important for the metabolism of monoamine oxidase, monoamine oxidase, catecholamines and serotonin. These are the substrates, catecholamines and serotonin. 
again this picture is there you have already gone th through oxidation which is p450 dependent and oxidation which is p450 independent in detail you have been told about it and examples of reduction are given over here then after the hydrolysis please concentrate on this hydrolysis two types of hydrolysis is there hydrolysis esters and then by this esters which of the drugs which are metabolized these are aspirin clo aspirin now you are all familiar with it clofibrate this is one uh, that uh, lipid lowering drug then procan local anesthetic succinyl choline note down Uh, this is a neuromuscular uh, relaxant and neuromuscular blocker. Then hydrolysis of amides. Amides, they are uh, example indomethacin, lidocaine is amide, while the procan is ester. These are hydrolyzed. And procan amide is is again one amide. This you will study. These are the local anesthetic lidocaine and endomethacin is a painkiller. And I say, no, don't please. Reduction. Examples of reduction. Microsomal and this is a reduction example. Of micro. These are also microsomal and non-micro. Examples of microsomal reduction. Chlorophenicol. Note please on drug previously given for typhoid. Clonazepam, then dantrolen, neuromuscular blocker, naloxone. It is, <clears throat> you know, antagonist. Naloxone antagonist of those narcotics. Methadone. This is microsomal reduction, non-microsomal reduction. It will be of aldehydes and ketone. Then examples of hydrolysis. It is again repetition, addition of a water molecule leading to breakage of molecule bond. It is water molecule is added, so the breakage of molecule bond. So examples. So of the hydrolysis, there will be esterases, uh, aspirin, procan, succinyl, choline, amidases. Of lidocaine, endomethacin, peptidases, insulin. What substances are on which this esterase acts? Acetylcholine. Uh, on that you know, pseudocholine esterases are like there. Then acetylsalicylic acid. No, don't uh, aspirin. Acetylsalicylic acid. So by esterase, it is converted to salicylic acid and acetic acid. Aspirin, please note on. Phase two conjugation reactions. We have been told uh, recently conjugation. What happens? It is the addition or the synthetic process by which drugs are made water soluble or. Ionized conjugation is the addition of endogenous ionized moiety. Endogenous ionized moiety is added to the original drug. Endogenous ionized moiety to the original drug or to its phase one metabolite may be acting in the metabolic sites. This conjugation may be direct. You have been told about it. Say the isoniazide. Directly. Then conjugation conjugates are polar molecules. When conjugation occurs, the drugs they are made polar, and they are readily excreted and are often inactive. Conjugation formation involves high energy intermediates. In this conjugation process, it is a high energy intermediate and specific transfer enzymes is required. Transfer is the name of.
properties. These are the drugs and the reaction of conjugation reactions. You should know, if not all, at least two, which are drugs which are being conjugated and how they are. Main substance used for conjugation is the glucuronic acid, glucuronic acid. And the substrates, they are acetaminophen or paracetamol, diazepam, digoxin, morphine, sulfur, methyl, at least two or three, for example. Then example of conjugation is acetylation, like clonazepam, dapson, which is one drug for leprosy or also for malaria. Isonate, you have been told. Sulfonamides, they are acetylated. Then another conjugation is their glutathione conjugation. Glutathione. If there is a deficiency of glutathione, the, <clears throat> there will be toxicity of acetaminophen, especially in the children. Glutathione conjugation. So glutathione, it conjugates with ethic chronic acid previously used at diuretic, ethic chronic acid. And then glutathione conjugation may be a reactive phase one metabol metabolite of acetaminophen. Phase one metabolite, very important reaction. You must go through it in detail toxicity of paracetamol. Then there is glycine conjugation. Uh, glycine that is added to a substance like deoxycholic acid, nicotinic acid, nicotinic acid, niacin and silic, salicylic acid. Then sulfation is also conjugation. What is being sulfated like methyl dopa, antihypertensive drug is there again acetaminophen is the that is sulfated. Then methylation is another process of conjugation. Here dopamine is methylated, epinephrine, these two words you know the catecholamine, note down please what is catecholamine. Histamine is methylated, then norepinephrine is also catecholamine and thiouracil. Drug metabolism in human usually results in a product. That is, you, you should go through it. So what the drug metabolism is doing. So make things more lipid soluble, more or uh, yeah, they are various uh, given. Less lipid soluble than the original drug, more likely to distribute interest and more likely to be reusable, more lipid soluble than the original law, less water. So you should go through that and what's the purpose of uh, this uh, drug metabolism. They are made uh, water soluble, the yes, lipid soluble. They are made uh, polar or water soluble. To be